Some songwriters never really catch a big break, but are still prolific creators who have a profound influence on other performers. And that's the story behind the actual songwriter of today's song, Clay Pigeons. And down to the Greyhound station, gonna buy a ticket to ride. Gonna find that lady with two or three kids and sit down by her side. On a ride till the sun comes up and down. Clay Pigeons was actually written by a guy named Blaze Foley, who was, until recently, a largely unknown but fantastic songwriter on the Austin music scene. He's the subject of a biopic called Blaze, directed by Ethan Hawke, and you might want to have a look at it. I stumbled upon Gerf Morlix's music around 2010 when one of my students wanted to learn the song One More Second, and there's a link to that lesson right here. Gerf Morlix and Blaze Foley were pals and musical collaborators back in 1975 in Austin, so my introduction to Gerf Morlix led me to Blaze Foley. Around 2000, Merle Haggard recorded another Blaze Foley song, If I Could Only Fly. To Eventually, John Prine heard that record and went looking for more Blaze Foley songs to listen to. One thing led to another, and here we are with John Prine's cover of Clay Pigeons, a song written by Blaze Foley, a song that John really loved, recorded in the studio, and performed frequently in a live context. Today, we're going to look at the John Prine version of this fantastic Blaze Foley song, Clay Pigeons. We're going to look at the chords, the verse, the instrumental section, and the sequence of how the song goes together. John uh, Prine plays clay pigeons with a capo on the third fret like this, and all the chord references that we're talking about, and there aren't that many, are in reference to that uh, capo position. So the, the chords we play are a basic G chord, a basic C chord, and we're playing a D7 with an F sharp bass. The verse. The verse of Clay Pigeons is built around this simple finger picking pattern. It's a good idea to just practice the pattern itself just on the G chord. Once you begin to be a little bit comfortable with the basic pattern, then we'll start working through the sections of the verse. The verse is just an eight measure figure that's repeated either two or three times depending on where we are in the song. Then there's a four measure turnaround at the end of the verse. Let's start by looking at the verse. Here's measure one and measure two of the verse. Simple rhythm on the G chord. This is the same pattern the second two measures of the verse are the exact same picking pattern, but now on the C chord. Only the bass note is different here. Uh, now we're hitting bass on the A string. Okay, here's close up number four. We, again, we're just doing the same uh, two measures that we did at the beginning, two measures of G. Close up five, uh, the fourth two measure phrase of the verse is the same picking pattern as the first two measures, but now we're holding down the D7 F sharp chord. I don't know if you can see that here. There's the D7 F sharp chord. So it's just D7 here with an F sharp on the bass. And the same picking pattern is on the G. So here's, the, here's that repeating section of eight measures of the verse. I'm going to play it at a modest pace uh, just so that you can hear the whole thing of a piece. Here's the repeating section of the verse. Finally, to close out the verse, we have a four measure turnaround. The first three measures of the turnaround just repeat the G chord and C chord patterns that we've already used in the verse, 
The fourth measure introduces a hammer-on uh, on a new variation of the D7 and F sharp pattern that we're going to look at here. Here's the first three measures of the instrumental turnaround. So this is the turnaround at the end of the verse. After we've played the two or three repeats, then we're going to play this, which is the turnaround. First measure is just a regular G. Second measure is uh, the regular C. Third measure of the turnaround is a regular G again. And here's the final measure of the turnaround. It's uh, measure four of the turnaround. This is the D7 measure. So pay attention to the timing of the hammer-on that ha lands on uh, that lands on beat three. So it's okay. The timing's a little sophisticated because the hammer-on lands at the same time as the thumb beat on beat three. I'll do that one again. Okay, it's a little bit sophisticated, but it's a very, very common figure that you're going to see in a lot of fingerstyle songs. I'm going down to the Greyhound station, gonna buy a ticket to ride. Gonna find that lady with two or three kids and sit down by her side. Ride till the sun comes up. Round about two or three times Smoking cigarettes in the last seat Sing a song for the people I meet And get along with it all Down where the people say y'all Sing a song with a friend Change the shape that I'm in And stop playing it The song begins with a melodic instrumental which is played again in the middle of the song and once again at the end. The instrumental is very similar to the verse and that's why I have you studying the verse first because it lays the foundation for the instrumental interlude. Two, three, four. Let's step through this section by section and you'll soon see that it's only a little bit more complicated than the verse itself. So there's a lot of repetition of these first two measures of the instrumental. It's just a G and we're, we're just fingering the G as you can see on the screen. We're just fingering the G with a single note on the low E string. The rest of it's open strings. So the uh, uh, beginning except for the hammer on on beat one of measure two. So here's measure one. And here's measure two. Okay, so here's all of measure one and measure two. Measures three and four are just a reinterpretation of measures one and two, but now on the C chord. Okay, and the hammer on, we're using a hammer on on beat one of the second measure, but this time we're hammering on from one to three on the B string, just like this. Okay, measures four, uh, five and six, we're just repeating measures one and two. Here on uh, seven and eight, we're switching to the D7 with the F sharp chord. And we're basically playing a version of the a version of the G pattern that is we're playing in five and six, but now we're again we're fingering the D7 with F sharp. A slight difference here on uh, beat two end, we're uh, jumping back, we're repeating the G string. 
And this is just to make it more musical and fluid. Okay, that's measures seven and eight. Measures nine and 10, again, are exactly the same as one and two and five and six. Measure, uh, measures 11 and 12 are the same as three, as three and four at the beginning. Okay, and now we're going to do a regular G, our re regular uh, measure one of G. That's measure 13. Here we have a slightly fancy D7. But we have to pay attention here. Okay, and I'm playing this, you'll notice I'm playing this with two fingers to play those notes on the B string. So I'm playing the, the hammer on note on beat two and with my middle finger and then my thumb on the low E. So, and then pointer to get the open B. So here's how that looks, measure 14. And then my last close up here at the end of the instrumental is a couple of special measures of very simplified G and it's just this. I'm holding down G and I'm going. And then uh, playing the octave on G on high, low, high E and low E. Okay. Let's have a quick look at the sequence of how Clay Pigeons is put together. Okay, so it begins with the instrumental. We play what I call the main verse. It's a three repeat verse that gets repeated at the beginning and end of the song. Then the second verse is a two repeat verse, a little bit shorter, an instrumental. The third verse is another different two repeat verse. And I'm talking about that eight measure repeat that's in the middle of the verse. Then after verse three, we repeat, we play verse one a second time, which is the three repeat verse we began the song with, and then an instrumental at the end as well. So today we looked at the Blaise Foley song, Clay Pigeons, as performed by John Prine. Uh, I'm including a link to John's live performance of the song from Austin City Limits in the description, and it's definitely worth checking out. In part, it's a great performance. In part, it's also the version of the song that I transcribed for this lesson. Today we learned the chords for clay pigeons, the verse structure for clay pigeons, the instrumental section that is used at the beginning, middle, and end of the song, and we learned the sequence of how the song pieces go together. Looking for more great songs to learn, just click on one of the videos that's popping up on either side of me now. And please come back and visit me again soon at Bonner Guitar. I'm transcribing new songs all the time. I'll see you then.